Why are healthy employees more productive? It's a question that seems simple, but has profound implications for every organization aiming to thrive in today's competitive landscape. Healthy employees are not just less likely to take sick days. They are also more engaged, more motivated, and more creative. So how can we foster a healthier workplace? Rise and shine leaders, this is Glenn Geitzen, your cultural futurist, equipping organizations with effective strategies to foster a culture of innovation, reduce workplace stress, and elevate team performance. It's time for our executive coffee break. Yes, I have my beverage in hand. I hope you have yours too. They say that you can't choose your family, but you can choose your workplace culture and your beverage. Leadership matters, so you might as well get good at it. If you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to like and subscribe. Well, today I want to talk a little bit about why healthy employees are more productive, and I'm going to be sharing five tips for a healthy workplace, including some critical advice on mental health. So let's break down the connection between health and productivity. Healthy employees typically have higher energy levels, better focus, and more resilience against stress. And we know that stress can be a killer. This means that they perform their tasks more efficiently and are better equipped to handle the demands of their role. Moreover, a healthy workplace can lead to lower healthcare costs, I know you like that, and reduce absenteeism, which are significant benefits for any organization. So what can you do to promote a healthier workplace? And I know you have a ton of things on your plate, a ton of things that you have to manage. And now here's Glenn talking about uh, a healthier workplace and being concerned about the well-being of your employees. Well, it's important. It's important so that you can get the most out of your team, so that you can take care of your team. And as we think about changing workforce demographics, we're going to have an older workforce. And so health is going to be imperative if we want people to be with us for the long haul, if we want a productive workplace, if we want to drive innovation. So number one, encourage physical activity. Uh, Implement wellness programs that promote regular exercise. This could be as simple as organizing walking meetings, offering gym memberships, or providing on-site fitness classes. Physical activity boosts energy levels and improves mood, contributing to overall productivity. And if you have people that are working at home, get them active too. Um, make, make sure people take breaks. Pretty easy thing. You can get people timers so that they can time how long they're sitting at their desk uh, and encourage them to move around. Number two, promote healthy eating. Now, this could be a challenge for some of you, depending on where you are. Uh, If you are in Texas, like me, we have good barbecue, San Antonio, good Mexican food. But ensure that your workplace has access to nutritious food options. This could include providing healthy snacks, organizing cooking classes. Yeah, you can have a little fun with this or having a cafeteria that offers balanced meals. A healthy diet fuels the brain and body, leading to better performance and just remind people to eat better. We're not going to fat shame people. We're not shaming people for some of the choices that they make, but we want to educate people and let them know how simple changes can benefit them in the long run. Now, number three, something that's really important is mental health support. I think it's more crucial now than ever to provide mental health support. Mental health is just as important as physical health. Provide access to mental health resources such as counseling services, mental health days, and stress management workshops. Creating an open environment where employees feel comfortable discussing mental health uh, can significantly reduce workplace stress. And being aware of it as a supervisor, make sure that you are in tune with what's going on uh, emotionally and, and mentally with the people that work for you. Uh, Make sure you have good communication uh, and that people feel safe approaching you about some of these things. Or again, there are many different programs that you can invest in. Make sure people are aware 
of those opportunities. And if something happens that's traumatic in your workplace, please, please, please uh, provide that information to people immediately so that they can get the help that they need. So if you are struggling to enhance your team performance, to build trust, download the free 10 tip sample of the art of harmonious trust and discover how harmonious trust unlocks your team's potential. You know, I want you to be able to build psychological safety, foster open communication, and to discover a shared purpose for your team. And if you're looking for more, up level with the full 52 tip guide on Amazon for a complete transformation of your organization. Download that free preview today. I'll put the information in the description. All right, number four, something else that you might want to invest in is ergonomic workspaces. Invest in ergonomic furniture and equipment to prevent injuries and reduce strain. Adjustable desks, supportive chairs, and proper lighting can make a huge difference in an employee's physical comfort and the ability to focus on their work. Hey, I know I'm at the age where I need uh, some some assistance. You have some older workers. Uh, lighting, hey, hey, these glasses really help. So lighting, glasses, uh, you, you won't be providing glasses, but your programs can. Uh, but light goes a long way. Good chairs so that people can sit down and uh, be comfortable, but also, you know, that they're not putting undue strain on their bodies. These are all important things. Taking care of of people is, is, is so important. It is. And these little things can go a long way to a productive workforce. Now, the other thing is work-life balance. What does that mean? Uh, depending on what generation you're from, it could mean different things. But really, work-life balance, I want you to encourage employees to maintain a healthy work-life balance. Uh, flexible working hours are, are part of this. Re remote work options, if that's available in your workplace. Clear boundaries between work and personal time can prevent burnout and ensure that employees remain productive and engaged over the long term. Even think about when you send emails. Uh, a friend of mine, a past client, was talking about this in one of the uh, tags that she put in my um, mentions, but she was talking about emails, that uh, she saw that emails uh, from CEOs often come with a little tag. Hey, I'm sending you this email during a time that's appropriate for me, feel free to respond at a time that's appropriate for you. Uh, particularly, we're talking about after hour uh, emails. How many of you all get get them? I, kn I know I do. And I know I've sent them to my, my team. Uh, and I say, hey, look, this is when I have a time of peace and quiet. I can send you this email. Please don't feel like you have to respond to me on the weekend. I get up early sometimes on the weekend and send out emails and uh, get the things that are in my head out of my head because I don't have any interruptions, but I don't expect my team to uh, reply at midnight. I don't uh, expect them to apply uh, to reply, you know, early on Sunday morning. I, I really don't. But those may be times where I send some things out. And it's good if you're a, a uh, leader to set those expectations, say, hey, I don't want you to reply to this. Or you can use the scheduling function. I know sometimes it's a little wonky. I don't always use it. But the scheduling function is another thing that you can do with your email so people don't feel pressured to respond during late hours or off hours. And so uh, this work-life balance, having clear boundaries is something that's very important and really respecting people when they are on, on vacation. Don't, don't fill up their inbox when they're on vacation. Wait till they go back, uh, come back to, to send them that email. Don't, don't bug people when they're supposed to be off. Let them be off. Give people time to regenerate and be rejuvenated. That's what vacation is, is for. Uh, make sure your people use the time that they have because you want them there for the long term. So just one thing I just want you to think about. Implementing these strategy, strategies not only enhances uh, employee well-being, but also creates a positive workplace culture where employees feel valued and supportive. Uh, that's really important nowadays. Uh, this in turn leads to higher job satisfaction, better teamwork, and a more innovative and productive organization. And people will say, hey, this is a great place to work. They would encourage their friends to come and work. And this will help you with your retention and recruiting efforts as you seek to have this workplace of 
Excellent. So as we close, just let's not forget the strength and perseverance that it takes to lead with empathy and inclusivity. Better leaders get better results. So to every one of you leading the charge for a more supportive and engaged workplace, I leave you with this. Stay bold, stay inspired, and remember that your actions today shape the culture of tomorrow. My name is Glenn Guyton. You all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful day.